Hi there, my name's Kim. This was my favorite shirt when I was in high school. I think that tells you everything about me that you need to know. Hello everybody, my name is Kim. Welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for the nice response to my last video about PCOS. Some of the messages and comments and stuff that I got made me tear up like, Thank you so much. People are so kind. And maybe I'm a bit biased because I am his number one fan, but I got a lot of Marcel related fan mail, which I appreciate even more because I love him so much. Now, before we get started, I do just want to give a quick content warning. I am going to be talking about drug and alcohol use in this video. So if that's something that's going to be difficult for you to watch, I totally understand. I've been there myself too. I would recommend that you go and watch this video about a sexist guy on TikTok. So now we're going to get started. Speaking of TikTok, I, like many people, enjoy going on TikTok from time to time. I've actually been posting on there a little bit. I know some of you already went and followed me, but you can find me on there, Kimberly T. For me, it's just like a nice little palette cleanser, usually between tasks that I'm doing and then I just stop and move on. But TikTok kind of started to change for me recently. And to explain that, I need to explain to you guys what has been going on inside my own brain, which <laughs> my brain, is a very scary place, don't get me wrong, but I'm gonna hold your hand, we're gonna get through it together. So I've talked about this a little bit before, but I am a person who is pretty much completely straight edge, and I more or less always have been. Pretty much the most crazy that I get is that sometimes I will have one drink. If someone else pays for it, that shit's expensive. And then with the kind of drinks that I like, the alcohol is just kind of getting in the way of my true love, which is drinking juice. Mmm, <laughs> juice. Yes, I was destined to live in The Sims. But pretty much anything else that I've done in my life, it hasn't been because I've wanted to have fun or because I've wanted to relax or whatever other reasons people do these things for. And <laughs> I'm not gonna get into it too much because this could be an entire other fucking video, but my relationship with this stuff, especially as a young person, has just made me feel like an alien on another planet. I pretty much just learned about the consequences of drug and alcohol use when I was like 10 years old in school. And I was like, all right, <laughs> y'all have sold me on a life of sobriety, <laughs> sounds good. But even when I was a kid, like everyone could still see that this is something that the majority of adults are engaging in, in some capacity, right? So I think for me, personally, whereas other kids kind of saw it as like, they were excited about this stuff because it seemed like cool and adult, for me, it felt like an impending doom, which I know sounds very dramatic, but that is how it felt to me because I knew that either my opinion on it was gonna have to change or the opinion of everybody around me was gonna change and then it was gonna be kind of difficult for me. Spoiler, the latter of those two things happened. As a teenager, it was exhausting. And I wanna say too, like, I know I'm very privileged to be able to say that like, I wasn't around this stuff my whole life and I only had to really face it as a teenager, but it was something that was difficult for me. It felt like when I was a teenager, whenever more than like three people <laughs> wanted to hang out together, there, there always had to be some scheme to like get weed, steal drinks. And then what just kind of ended up happening is I, as the sober one, ended up babysitting people who didn't really know how to drink or didn't really know how to smoke weed. That's like, oh, fuck, I don't know anything either, but I ended up learning more than I ever wanted to by being the only sober one there. And I know to some people this stage is kind of seen as like a rite of passage or a part of growing up or something. I completely reject that, but who knows? Maybe I would have been better if I'd just thrown caution to the wind, gone with the flow. But I'm sure everyone can relate to this about some weird conviction you have, but if other people go with the flow, I'm the fucking Hoover Dam. <laughs> Maybe that's not a great analogy. I never really tried to like stop anybody. I'm more like a big slab of concrete that just sinks to the bottom of the water and then gets left behind upstream. But I also, I have to forgive myself for feeling that way because I could tell you so many stories. Something mildly to severely traumatic happened almost every single time I was around people drinking when I was a teenager. But my trauma aside, the point is, this was something that I, felt pretty strongly about. And then it kept being reinforced by these things that were happening to me. And then it became not so easy for me to just be like, oh, like, it's not my thing, but you do you. Because I was watching bad things happen. I was seeing things go wrong under the explanation of like, having a good time. And to be honest, I was kind of bitter and angry that 
because I was making what I thought was a responsible decision to be sober, it also meant that this added responsibility kept being put on me in all these different scenarios. It gave me this belief that has been so hard for me to shake even as an adult, that every time a group of people drink or do drugs together, something goes horribly wrong. And it's like logically in my head, I know that that can't be true, but every time I'm around people who are drinking and something goes wrong, it just reinforces that. And the really embarrassing drunk texts and drunk calls I've gotten from ex-boyfriends has not helped. And the worst part is I don't need to be more specific than that because it's all of them. But the thing is, even if I did want to change my opinions, especially when I was a teenager, I really felt like I couldn't. I don't think everybody would feel this way, but I kind of felt locked into my decision because I said no to a wine cooler when I was 15. Sometimes people I cared about not meaning badly would be like, Kim, I did something bad. And I'd be like, what did you do? And they'd say like, I got drunk or I did a weed. And again, nobody meant badly, but it just reaffirmed what was already in my head. And it like kind of established that I felt like I was in this box and needing to be like a moral authority or something. But there was one very important way that it was easier to be that way when I was a kid than it is now. And that is because I think I can get almost anybody on board with me when I say that frequent drug and alcohol use, especially on a kid's developing brain is just not good. And that was something I knew for sure when I was a teenager. I think a problem is that there's so much like anti-drug propaganda that just wants everything to be illegal and banned and forbidden and gone that it kind of leads people to like tune it all out and forget that these substances are not good for a young brain. And of course, doing especially soft drugs like once in a while in a responsible, educated way, it's not the end of the world. Even grandma Kim won't judge you for that. But even when I was a teenager, I thought it was kind of depressing that we constructed or like have this view of childhood where it is so normal for teenagers to be experimenting with this kind of stuff. Ugh, I know, I'm so sorry. I'm very fun at parties. But like for real though, hear me out. If people would just wait to have their experimental phase until the brain was done developing in like your mid twenties. I'm not like a scientist or anything, but I feel like that would just be so much better for brain health. Not to mention, we know for sure that it'll put you at way lower risk of addiction. But now to start talking about how I got interested in this stuff again recently, I've kind of had my opinions be a certain way for a really long time. And I kind of felt like they were locked in whether I wanted them to be or not. But now I'm 23 years old, my mid twenties are on the horizon. I see them approaching. And now unfortunately I can't just be judgmental of people and put it under the guise of caring about healthy brain development. I have to actually think, it's so annoying. Quarantine has also made this very difficult for kind of two different reasons. The first one is just like, going on social media and seeing people reminisce about the kind of stuff that they miss doing. A lot of it is stuff that I just don't really relate to, like people being excited about, you know, clubs and bars and parties and like drinking with their friends and stuff. And then the other part is it feels like everybody has been using drinking, but especially weed to cope with the pandemic. If you're interested in like weird <laughs> stats, you should definitely look up how much the weed business has skyrocketed since the beginning of the pandemic, because it is insane. Where I live, it feels like a new dispensary opens up every fucking week. I think we have more dispensaries than liquor stores now. I totally support it being legal and everything. It's just crazy how much it's exploded. So then I look around me and I see all these people using it to cope and I'm like, hello, <laughs> I'm depressed, I would like to cope. And then I remember, no, I can't use it to cope because I'm still deeply torn about my opinions on everything and have been since I was a teenager. It's like, I don't want James Randi to be disappointed in me, but also I can see the appeal of having another coping mechanism that isn't eating ice cream and crying. No, I'm just kidding. It's not so much that I've been interested in this stuff. I think it's more just like giving myself mental permission to think that it's okay. I, I don't know, I haven't quite figured it out yet. But it started to get to a little bit of an unhealthy point in my head a few months ago where any time that I saw somebody talking about or portraying or whatever, like drinking and drug use, I got super anxious and it's so embarrassing. I've had anxiety problems with people talking about this stuff in real life, but I've never had anxiety problems seeing this in media until very suddenly I just did. If I saw this stuff, it would literally ruin my day because I would get stuck in this super unproductive, like downward thought spiral of just trying to process everything. I think genuinely a part of it is that life has just been kind of boring and my brain was desperate for something to be anxious about. So now you can imagine that it was 
was really frustrating for me to go onto TikTok, which was usually my nice little palette cleanser, and suddenly become very aware that there is a crap ton of drug related content on TikTok. What used to be a nice distraction suddenly became a catalyst for everything that I was trying to work through in my head. And then that got me thinking, wait a fucking second, there's a lot of kids on TikTok. I have never searched for drug content. It just shows up on my feed and TikTok decides that that's what I want to watch. I feel like that's probably not good. So I decided to turn my fixation into something productive and that is how I got started on this video. So when I made my video about Christian TikToks that a lot of you guys have seen, I made this alternate TikTok account where I liked probably hundreds of Christian videos just to try and get that to be the whole feed. So to give TikTok kind of a fighting chance, I feel like instead of just using a completely fresh account, I decided to use my Christian alternate account and just see how long it would take me for the feed to be majority drug content. And I never searched for anything. I didn't follow anybody new. All I did was I either like watched it all the way through or I would like it. So how long did it take and how did we get there? Well, before I tell you that very quick lesson for you, TikTok does try to block certain types of content. And the biggest way that it does this is through certain keywords. If you use TikTok a lot, this stuff has probably become kind of second nature to you, but there's certain words that they will block from showing up on people's feeds. So then people will use other words to try and circumvent that. Not even to try and circumvent it, just to circumvent it. So for example, a lot of words about death, um, pretty much all the sex words and a lot of drug related words as well. But people are people and there's a very established system in place for how you get around this. So you might see this emoji or you might see it called weed. This one is pretty self-explanatory and they have not banned the word mushrooms. And the other one you should know is of course snow. And then any other possible term that is banned, you'll just kind of see the vowels replaced with a character. So how long did it take my good Christian TikTok feed to become completely filled with drugs? Well, about 15 minutes, way quicker than I expected. And the path to get there was very weird. It was different than I was expecting. If you're curious what the gateway was, it started with videos of nature and then I got this one. Of course, it looks innocent enough, but looking at it, you can probably imagine where this is going. So from this video, mushrooms became my whole feed for like a short period of time. And then from there, I started getting some weed content. And since my plan was to like all of the drug related content, then that started populating my feed. In the first like 15 to 20 minutes of me doing this, I found two videos about the downsides of using these drugs. One was a video of this guy talking about how he quit weed and he said he had kind of been using it as a crutch and now he's kind of dealing with his problems in the real world and it's been challenging, but he's like hopeful. And it was very well received, the comments were positive. But the other video was about the negative effects of psychedelics. Starts taking psychedelics at 15. Derealization kicks in, insomnia, altered vision hits, paranoia smacks, and they call it self-exploration. And if you know anything about psychedelics, you know you're not really supposed to do them if you have like a personal or family history with schizophrenia, psychosis, certain mental issues, right? But I think what should also kind of get thrown in there is that you should avoid doing them if you have a personal history of being an insufferable asshole. Because I'm sorry, I know people are gonna get mad, but just seems to make it a lot worse. The way that I'm gonna put it, and I'm sorry if this upsets people, but this is really what I think. If you think that you learned a lot about yourself from your drug trip, everybody around you learned way more about you after. And lots of people don't become huge dicks after, so. So that is all to say that a lot of these comments did not pass the vibe check. It's not the psychedelics that did that. It's the being 15 and not knowing how to take psychedelics. You have to be in the right mind space and not 15. So I don't disagree. I do think if you want to minimize the bad side effects, you should probably not do it when you're young. But what if this video said that she started drinking really heavily when she was 15 and it gave her memory problems? Would you say that it's not the alcohol that did that to her? Her video is not talking about legality or trying to take anything away from anybody it's just sharing an experience. And I think that if you're not prepared to accept the fact that the drug that you like could have negative consequences, then you're probably not taking it in a responsible way. You either abused them, took something laced slash not pure, or it's just not for you. They're definitely not for everybody, but they can be useful. Uh, maybe I'll cut this out, but I feel like maybe it's not for you either if it's causing you to victim blame a child. Even if some people think that a drug might be really wonderful and fun and whatever, the negative consequences of it still need to be taken into consideration and can't just be blown off. So here's someone that I agree with, not people in the comments thinking it's okay for a 15 year old to take any type of mind altering drug. The brain stops developing at 25. I found one of my people, but somebody responded and said, they have been doing it for centuries in indigenous cultures. It's all about set and setting. 
oh, well, I'm sure if some people have been doing it for centuries, then that means it's totally fine, right? Not to mention, my first thought with this was like, would you give the drugs to a newborn baby? What about like a five-year-old? If you're saying no, then you're acknowledging that the brain needs some time to develop. And we have more information now than we did centuries ago about when the brain kind of wraps up that development process. So that information might be important to know. So as I was scrolling on my feed, the psychedelic content slowly started to fade away. And I think just because there's a lot more of it, it became all weed content. There was a part of this video that I was going to include where I was going to talk about people who were literally posting videos of themselves smoking weed while they were behind the wheel of their car driving. And I decided I'm not going to get into it so much just because I'm a person who does not smoke weed. And fun fact, I also don't know how to drive. I'm just going to say do not drive while you're impaired in any way. That could be from drugs, from drinking, from being too tired anything. Just don't do it, please. I just want everyone to be safe. That's all I want. So at this point, I was starting to get a little bit disappointed with my feed because on my personal TikTok account, I had gotten way crazier shit and I just wasn't really coming across that. And I didn't understand why because I was interacting with lots of drug videos. So I thought that was like signaling TikTok to like give me more, but it was just giving me more weed stuff. And this is when I realized it was worse than I even thought because I stopped liking drug related videos. And that is when shit went down. The psychedelic stuff came back in full force. Lots of shrooms, lots of acid. Here's a comment from a video about psychedelics. I'm only 14, definitely an experience. Love them, really makes me realize I need to enjoy my youth and get closer to God and live life to its fullest. Liked by creator. <laughs> Oh boy. But I knew the trick now, so I didn't interact with them and I just kept scrolling and it kept coming. We got videos about Molly, acid, Molly and acid together. We started getting the cocaine stuff finally. I had been waiting for it. I also saw videos about Xanax, Adderall, DMT. And then I finally decided to just quit while I was ahead when I got videos about meth and heroin. And to give credit where credit was due, if you looked in the comment sections of these videos, you usually could find a comment of somebody having a problem with what was going on. But the overwhelming majority was talking about how fun it looked and people encouraging each other to do it and try it and whatever. Actually, yeah, that's important to talk about. I noticed so many comments where it would just be some random account that says like, should I try x drug and then always somebody would be like yes it's the most fun ever go do it on just a random tiktok account i mean this is assuming that this is actual interest and not just all kids trying to show off which it could very well be in fact i kind of hope that it is but if it is somebody who's actually like tried the thing recommending it what the fuck? You have no idea who you just recommended this drug to. What are you doing? And by the way, I can't make this shit up. The drug related content is not just on the For You page. Before I had decided that I was going to make this video, I decided to go on the Learn page. That's if you click the little light bulb thing in the top corner. This is supposed to be kind of a curated list of educational content. And I fucking can't make this shit up. This is the first video that it showed me. Psychology Facts Part 27 Marijuana and Caffeine Can Double a Woman's Chances of Having a Satisfying Orgasm <laughs> What the fuck? And in case you thought that that was like a weird fluke or something, after I was done with this experiment, I decided to go back to the Learn page and see what was there. And this was the first video it showed me. Facts about cocaine. <laughs> I'm not going to play the whole video, but you guys get the point. <laughs> what? At least this one kind of talks about the downsides, but like, Jesus fucking Christ. So I think that there is a problem with how easily this stuff gets shared on TikTok, a platform that is mostly young people. And I've decided to focus on drug use for this video, but I'm sure you can extrapolate and imagine how that could apply to other rabbit holes that you can fall down. Maybe I'll talk about one on another video. You're welcome to suggest one. Here's something else that I thought about with all of this. TikTok? already has systems in place to put warnings on videos. It's pretty inconsistent, but a lot of like motorcycle videos or like stunt things or skateboarding videos are a big one that have warnings. Here's an example. The actions in this video could result in serious injury or adverse health effects. <laughs> Ooh. And I'm not trying to say that it's necessarily a bad thing to have a warning like that on a video. It kind of reminds me of the warnings you would see on like kids content on TV. That's fine. But not only was TikTok's algorithm so quick to push drug content on me when it was something that I really did not want to have to think about. Also, not one single video that I showed you 
had a warning on it. And my guess for why would just be that TikTok doesn't want to take responsibility for having that kind of content on its platform, which makes sense, right? They tried to ban these videos. They didn't want to put warnings on them. But I think TikTok kind of does need to take responsibility for it because this is a huge thing that tons of people are making videos about. And there's nothing innately wrong with making videos about this type of stuff. And I'm not sure exactly what solution would satisfy me to be totally honest, but I feel like there needs to be something in place for where this content doesn't just appear so easily on people's feeds. And when it does, there's proper warnings about it. Personally, for my weird fears, um, watching all this stuff has been pretty weird for me. It's definitely been like a glimpse into this whole world that I'm just not really a part of. And it didn't really help me with my personal <laughs> struggle. It didn't give me more guidance or make me any less torn than I was before. But I could see if similarly to me, someone like this became their whole TikTok feed was seeing these types of videos. I could see how that could very much normalize it for somebody. Seeing over and over all of these people glorifying this thing, there is content that shows the downsides, but it's really not that much. And then you're scrolling for hours a day. I feel like that could make it just a normal thing in your brain. And that's not necessarily a good thing. People should be thinking critically and making good choices. Uh, Grandma Kim says, make good choices. Please to everybody out there, just be safe, be responsible. And especially if you have a young brain, you know, just be aware of how much you're doing, how often, just be careful, that's all I want. <laughs> Brain health is so important when you're young because it really sets you up for the best position for you to be in for the rest of your life. But I also know that for every person who isn't me, having fun <laughs> at some point is probably also important to you. So yeah, just be safe, be careful. I'm still waiting for the day that I experience fun. <laughs> Maybe we'll get there someday. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, give it a like. If you wanna see more of my stuff, you can subscribe to my channel. Links for my Discord and social media accounts are down in the description, so check them out if you're interested. And I will see you on the next video where I will be talking about something else.